Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Elite Health Wellness Podcast. Um, once again today, we are with Michaela. How are you doing, Michaela? Good, Boomer. How are you? Good. Always happy when Michaela joins us. And my name is Boomer Cornwell. I'm one of the owners and co-founders of Elite Health Online. And we're going to go over a topic, actually two topics today, um, that we've gone over before, but I think it's worth repeating. And this time we're going to do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, and that's with the two kind of premier weight loss metabolic compounds that we have, semaglutide and terzepatide. Um, from a commercial standpoint, you'll recognize semaglutide as maybe Ozempic, um, and then the terzepatide is going to be Manjaro. Um, now, a little bit different. We'll get into that in a little bit, but the, but the compound itself, semaglut semaglutide versus terzepatide. So let's start just to kind of level set. I know we've done this before, but let's let's really talk to our audience about what these two things are. So let's let's give a brief review of semaglutide and then terzepatide, then we'll dig into some more than meat. Sure. A so semaglutide, like you said, um, Ozempic, Wagovi, Rubelsis, they are FDA approved for type 2 diabetes management. Mm -hmm. um, as That's what they were originally type 2, you know, approved right. for by the FDA. Subsequently, Wagovi in particular is the injectable peptide used for weight loss. Okay. Um, I get asked sometimes, what's a peptide, you know, for people who don't really yeah. understand? Sure. Peptides are, <laughs> I've heard them described in a couple different ways on a bit of a more surface level. You think of it like a chain. Um, you know, you go to Lowe's or whatever, you buy a chain, mm -hmm. but the chain pulls the trailer. Right. Well, the, the amino acids are essentially connected together to produce in a, a downstream product. Mm -hmm. This will go on to bind to a receptor, which releases other things into the bloodstream. So the the actual acting agent is not the peptide in particular. The peptide right. is going to bind to something that will release the actual, um, you know, product producing or difference producing mechanism. Okay. So in this case, that is usually insulin. Um, insulin is the first peptide. I've the, heard that. Yes, I've, the I've first peptide, the 20s, um, is when they, you know, isolated insulin and obviously used it for patients who had diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, semaglutide in particular is what is called a GLP-1. It's a glucagon-like peptide 1. Um, it has receptors really all over your body, which will, you know, help lead to all the other metabolic effects. Okay. So I know we've talked about this just recently about how semaglutide is, you know, oftentimes marketed as a weight loss drug. I don't want it to stop there. Semaglutide has amazing results in cardioprotective activity and yeah. lowering, you know, your opportunities or, or instances of heart failure, heart mm -hmm. attacks, stroke. Um, it does have neuroprotective, um, right. you know, products. And then, um, you know, a lot of great things, including like fertility. You know, mm -hmm. you need to be a certain weight to, to qualify for for fertility as well. Right. So yeah. um, it's a great drug that's very available through a compounding pharmacy, as you know, at Elite Health Online. Sure. Um, weight loss benefits are amazing. Right. Amazing. Which I think is the the vast majority, in fact, I know yeah. it is, of why <laughs> our patients love it so much. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about one thing, and then we'll get into terzepatide. But um, one thing that I, and, and, and me personally, I've tried semaglutide. Here's what I've noticed. I, I don't have diabetes, clearly, clearly, <laughs> because what happened was I took it and it worked so well that it made me really averse to food, yeah. right? Which it's it's really designed to, to kind of control the insulin level like you're talking about to mm -hmm. where maybe we don't eat as much um, yes. or maybe we eat better things and, and that kind of thing. And so we're able to control our blood sugar, which is always going to be the culprit in, in weight management. Mm -hmm. um, did a, it, it actually did too good of a job for me <laughs> to where I was like, you know, I don't want to feel this way Ew, about I, food. This food. is getting a little <laughs> bit too much and I, and I don't want to be repulsed every time it's time to eat something. So I came off of it. Um, that's good though. That's good though. A lot of patients should take their time when they're on it to develop a healthy relationship with food. Right. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, there are people take a few different approaches to weight loss. Arguably the number one reason for obesity is insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Some of glutide, terzepatide, any glucagon like peptide one will help combat insulin resistance. Right. Next is overeating. Um, so how does semaglutide combat that? So while it does help with insulin secretion and helping to lower your blood sugar, right, it will also tighten up the pyloric valve, which is the, the you know, bridge between your stomach and your intestines, sure. um, which is going to go on to help delay gastric or GI emptying. Mm -hmm. um, that's just going to make you feel full. Right. It does help, you know, it's going to lead to that side effect profile of indigestion or constipation, maybe a little bit of GI upset, but we're going to delay the food moving throughout the GI tract slow down what's called the peristalsis or the moving of your intestines right. so that you feel fuller longer. Gotcha. It does have a neuro effect though. So remember there are GLP-1 receptors all throughout your body, including in your brain. It's going to go to your hypothalamus and tell your brain, hey, 
we're not hungry anymore. Mm. And it'll encourage your body. Okay, let's use the fat stores that we have for energy right. instead of the short acting, you know, sugars that we supplement with usually, uh, which we're not supplementing with because we're not so hungry anymore. Is it possible to tell your brain that you're not hungry at all? <laughs> because, yeah, right. because that's what I was experiencing. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, like, you know, I, yeah. I was, it was like time and I hadn't eaten in, you know, forever. And, I, and it would be time. And I'm like, I'm not even in the least bit interested in doing this. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that, and again, you know, that's what, personally, that's just why. But a, a lot of our patients will say that they had great results with it. You know, they, maybe they lost 20, 40, in some cases, 60 pounds, you know, some, some even lost more than that. Yeah. Um, so it almost becomes, uh, no pun intended, almost like a drug, right? Yeah. They they kind of, oh, I want more of this. I want, I want to do this I again. I want to drop another forever. 10. I want to drop another 20, right? Mm-hmm. And we do have maintenance doses patients can go on. But what a lot of patients are coming back, they're going, they're saying, I don't want that maintenance dose. I want the same dose I was on before because I, I want to drop another 20 or another 30 or whatever the case may be. And they're not seeing the exact same results with the second or even third round of this, right? Mm-hmm. Which you can do multiple rounds of this. So... Is there a reason, just from a scientific standpoint, is to, if a patient had great results and they shed 40, 50 pounds, and then they take a little bit of time off and get back on it again, but they're just not noticing anything, is it a dosing issue or is it possible it's just not working? Well, you, you know, like with most drugs, you do start to develop a, um, a resistance to, or, you know, your tolerance increases. Mm-hmm. So... Um, particularly with semaglutide, while it is approved for long-term treatment, it's one of what, seven or eight drugs now that's approved for long-term treatment. You could be on it for really as long as you wanted. Um, and if you're using it to manage, you know, metabolic diseases, that's fine, but you want to be at a low dose. So the, the goal is, was never to have you be on this drug to lose weight consistently. Forever. Uh, the general, forever. forever. Right. The general rule of thumb was with semaglutide anywhere from 10 to 15% of your original body mass is what you were expected to lose. But remember, it was not produced originally as a weight loss drug. This was produced to assist your metabolic health by lowering your A1C for patients who are diabetic. Um, If you do have patients who have been on it in the past and they come back on it, like, hey, I'm not getting the same weight loss results. Well, your initial body mass has decreased significantly. Mm -hmm. Additionally, your body does develop antibodies to drugs that, um, you know, are, are, not recognizable to it. That's a good point. Um, And it is also, you do develop a tolerance to these things. So in, in that note, I would just, you know, reiterate on what we've talked about in the past of like, Hey, take your time while you're on semaglutide to recognize this is what I feel like. These are my energy levels. This is how much I'm sleeping. Right. People always forget you need to sleep. Right. Please. That's when you secrete human growth hormone that will help you with your subsequent weight loss and your secretion of IGF one. Sure. Um, And how much you're eating and what you're eating. You know, like we've talked about, food is medicine. Right, so right. We talked eat about well. Yep, hundred percent. And I don't want to cut, but that's a good point. And I want to bring it up to the end, but I'm going to do it now before we get into terzepatide. <laughs> is you know, when patients get on these these really any medication, but I mean, but certainly something that's designed for uh, insulin management uh, or weight management, like a semaglutide or terzepatide, it doesn't mean eat whatever you want. Don't exercise. Okay. (laughs) You have to, you, you still have to have a healthy lifestyle. Don't be sedentary. Go to the gym, get outside and walk, get outside and run. If you want to do that, that's not what I do, but whatever. (laughs) Some people like it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, have those healthy habits and, and maintain those healthy habits. Because in some cases, what I've also experienced too, is that some patients are not getting the effect they want off of this because their lifestyle had just is not good. Mm-hmm. And they're still very sedentary. Yeah. And even though they may not eat as much, they're still not making good choices when they do eat. They're still going after the fast food, right? Because we're all busy. And, and they say, okay, great. I'm on one of these medications and I'm not eating as much, but that still doesn't make a hamburger from a fast food joint, a good decision. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Absolutely. We still have to have those, those, those healthy lifestyles and, and healthy choices. Well, and that's the best part of working with a healthcare provider. Yeah. You know, licensed healthcare providers will help you titrate appropriately so that the side effect profile is minimal. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, also guiding you and helping you understand that the food that you put into your body is important to achieve the goals that you want, whether it's aesthetic, whether it's, you know, health, whether it's managing your A1C. Um, but having that guidance, we see it a lot in the, you know, my compounding role in in that pharmaceutical representative role of, Hey, Mm -hmm. yeah, I put my patient on this for 12 weeks and then I put a refill on it and then I didn't see him again. Right. Well, that's not going to really provide the most significant patient feedback or patient, you know, satisfaction because they need a little bit of guidance as far as how to take their time while they're on semaglutide and give themselves the most positive patient experience. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, get the results that you want quality of life at this point. Right. That's right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about terzepatide for a second. So, um, again, under the brand name Manjaro, and is there anything else I'm leaving out? I know Manjaro. Just Manjaro. Just Manjaro. Manjaro. Okay, yes. good. Well, we've had semaglutide at Lead Health Online for a while. Um, 
Terzepatide is a fairly new addition. We've had it for a few weeks. 2021 huh? is when it was FDA approved. For gotcha. compounding, it's been... Well, and I, and I don't honestly remember when we even was able to launch it. I think it was really whenever there are, our vendor pharmacies had it available to us. So it's, it's been fairly recent. Um, let's talk a little bit about the difference. I mean, we, you talked about semaglutide. Um, I think as a whole, semaglutide and terzepatide are designed to kind of accomplish the same thing, right? Yeah. But what are the differences in terzepatide? Sure. So terzepatide, um, like I said, is newer. It's mm -hmm. 2021. So I, you know, sometimes I heard it called the grown-up version of semaglutide. <laughs> it's okay. a dual action. So while it does have that GLP-1, um, it also has a, what's a GIP. So okay. GIP is a glucagon-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. So big long words. What it really means is that, you know, you're going to have those benefits that you would get from semaglutide. The GIP does interact synergistically, okay. meaning that it's going to help propentiate and ex exacerbate the effects of the GLP-1, make it work a little bit more efficiently. Um, and on top of that, the biggest thing that, you know, there's probably two big things that I've heard. So it does interact with your adipose sites, your adipose sites. So it does or does not? Does. Okay. GIP will interact with your, your adipose. So your white adipose tissue, right. brown adipose tissue, and help dissolve the fat and have that fat be used as energy in a more, um, you know, quicker way okay. than you would see with, with semaglutide. Um, additionally is, this is argued a little bit in, in some of the journals. And to be honest, there's not a lot of great comparative studies between tirzepatide and semaglutide um, that have been peer reviewed. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is an anecdotal. Um, in that anecdotal evidence is people who say the side effect profile is much less on tirzepatide. Oh, interesting. Uh, whether it's, you know, the, the, the reflux or, um, you know, some of the abdominal pain, the side effect profile and the contraindications are the same. Okay. Um, whereas Manjaro does have vomiting mm -hmm. higher up in the list than, than semaglutide does. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Nuances. Again, yeah. you know, side effect profile can be managed by appropriately titrating. Mm -hmm. So semaglutide does have that, you know, four or five step titration of every four weeks. Terzepatide is very similar except the doses are different. So some of glutide, yeah. you're gonna do 0.25 milligrams for four weeks. Again, these are once weekly subcutaneous injections. Right. Uh, 0 0.5 milligrams for four weeks, one milligram for four weeks, a 1.7 and then 2.4. Mm -hmm. For terzepatide, it's gonna be two and a half to five milligrams, seven and a half, 10, and then 15. Some, you know, in the studies, truthfully, most patients, if they're not type two diabetic, mm -hmm. they really did not need more than a seven and a half milligram dose. Oh, really? Yes, and this is supported by the literature given by the Manjaro. The, the handouts does say that you know, seven and a half milligram dose is standard unless additional glycemic control is needed. Okay. Um, again, Manjaro was never FDA approved for weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, it is approved for type two diabetes. However, they do say, you can see up to twenty percent loss in your in your body. That's in the commercial. Oh heck yeah! <laughs> they, uh -huh. they, they, even though it may just be for type two diabetes, they actually say it right there in oh, the they commercial. Let you know. So yeah, uh, yeah. So again, <laughs> that kind of that off label thing we're talking about earlier, right? Even though that may not be what it's for. So I'm going to ask the um, ridiculous gym rat meathead question here. Um, we don't take these two things together. No, right? please don't. <laughs> please yeah. don't. You'd be um, amazed how often yes. we get that question. No, you'll just you'll you'll see hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia. Yeah, your blood sugar will drop. Yeah. Um, there's no point. It sounds expensive. Sounds well, expensive it's expensive, for... but, but you know, hey, the, the gym rat mentality is is if this works, then more must more be better. More must be better. Right. No, I no. You know what? Um, in that case, I would say, it when it comes to semaglutide. More is not better. Um, yeah. Or tears up type, more is not better. Finding your dose with your healthcare provider and figuring out, hey, this dose is best for me. I, We want the patient you know, experience to be the best as it can right. because the side effect profile is there. Sometimes they're like, you know, there's no golden parachute drug. There's no non side right. effect profile. Doesn't exist, that's no, right. Doesn't exist, but we can, you know, prepare you for it. Mm -hmm. So there is abdominal pain. There is some GI discomfort, you know, mm -hmm. possibly even vomiting or diarrhea. Which really is not that uncommon from any other peptide. Really. No. I mean, there's there's other peptides addressed to or, or, or meant to address certain things like, you know, pain or erectile dysfunction or whatever the case may be, you know, neurological disorder. They all have kind of the same side effect profile. This is not specific to some glutide or terzepatide. No, no. Everything has a side effect. Yeah. Everything. Right. Everything, especially an injectable. I mean... Yeah, you'd be and surprised. Especially a peptide. Yeah, say, hey, I, I have itching and red, you know, redness at the injection site. Yeah. Well, 
Okay. Put a little bit yeah. of drill on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that happen. happens. It yeah. certainly happens. Yeah. Um, you know, we can prepare you for that. Let you know, hey, when you give yourself an injection, you're introducing something foreign to your body. Your body's a little confused. Sure. That's what happens. When it comes to these sorts of drugs, um, you know, finding your dose that works for you, mm -hmm. it's not the same as everyone else. You know, it does have a very particular approach to it. Finding the dose that works best for you, working with your healthcare provider and being transparent with them about what, how you feel and what you want in the future will help prepare you for the best patient experience that you can receive. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Help you achieve your weight loss goals and help you reach, you know, the way that you want to look and metabolic health. You know, we want to increase your cardio protective activity. We want to, we want to help you productively age. Right. Um, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, NAD, rapamycin, all these anti-aging drugs. Mm -hmm. We can use these sorts of therapies, which aren't, you know, traditional, it's not phenamine or, or right. the traditional weight loss options that right. people have previously been introduced to. Mm -hmm. This is another way to help achieve, you know, health, wellness, and, and subsequently longevity yeah. um, through supplementing with something that does help your overall metabolic health. You, at the beginning of this, you talked about the, the cardiovascular and neuroprotective aspects of some of glutide. Mm -hmm. Is that true for terzepatide as well? Or because we're addressing the same thing, so I, I don't know if there's a difference, but I mean, I would assume that if we're addressing, you know, insulin resistance and pancreatic health, that the, the effects would be the same, right? We're still talking about cardiovascular health and we're still talking about neurological health. We would hope so, and we would assume so. However, it's so new that they don't actually have, they don't have the studies, the on, studies it? on it yet. Gotcha. Um, last I checked, there, there wasn't anything indicative of that. Um, additionally, the peer review comparison studies aren't great. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of things, they've they've tested that about anywhere from 5 to 10 milligrams of terzepatide is equivalent to 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide, so okay. the highest dose. But again, you know, each patient's different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the best part about working with providers who, who do cater to, yeah. to particular patient health. Every patient is different. Um, we don't want to titrate you all the way up to the top if we don't have to. Right. But circling back, there is, I want to say yes, I really do because it makes so much <laughs> yeah. sense, but yeah. there's no it, supportive right. data there's no, on there's it. There's yet. no data behind it. Yeah, that makes all kinds of sense. Well, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of goes to the crutch of what we do here at Elite Health Online. So you know, we do look at the whole patient. We don't we don't just want to address one thing. We want to address everything we possibly can, maybe not at all at one time, but eventually we want to look at the holistic patient. And this kind of fits right into what we're talking about. So when we address the hormone therapy aspect of it, we address uh, metabolic issues. You know, we're, we're launching a mental health platform coming soon. We're going to do some podcasts on that coming up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very important. Um, but, you know, when, whenever we talk about this too, because I, 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 and I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up, I heard a, a staggering number, and I think we're there, because I heard this probably 10 years ago. And I want to say that the, I think it was the FDA that was suggesting and predicting actually that by 2021 or 2022, that 50% of Americans would either be diabetic or they, or they would be diabetic and with, they would be undiagnosed. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, so. At least. <laughs> again, <laughs> It, so at least, really. I would, I mean, the amount of people out here <laughs> who probably worse. have no idea that they're living with a, a significant amount of insulin resistance, which subsequently is pre-diabetes, right. is staggering. Which is a great part about semaglutide is, hey, mm -hmm. you might be looking to shed 20 pounds and you're like, hey, you know, your BMI might, well, I don't love BMIs, but right. well, your weight might not be where you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and you're like, I just cannot lose this 20 pounds. Well, I think you would be surprised how many of those people that we all know yeah. were probably insulin resistant, yeah, which is just right. a step before diabetes. And unfortunately, the the most traditional route to treating this is wait until you're diabetic, right? And then and then we and then we and, treat and that's, you. And that, that's where it gets kind of tricky, right? Because that that's the whole point that I was getting to is the fact that you know people it, people think or they get frustrated because oh I can't lose weight no matter what I do I can't lose weight. Mm -hmm. Well, you may not be addressing the right problem. Maybe yeah. to your point, you know, if you try something like this, maybe it was the insulin resistance and maybe you are full on diabetic because there's there's not all of a sudden something hurts in your body and you oh that must be diabetes. Mm -hmm. I mean, diabetes is a very slow, very silent onset. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of endocrinologists have you know, they get into arguments and debates about does it start at, at an A1C of 6.6 or does it start at an A1C uh, what of 7? Is it now? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, is pre-diabetes 5.8 or is it 5.3? I mean, there's all these, it doesn't, kind of doesn't matter because at the same time, not that it doesn't, but mm -hmm. by the time your A1C has clicked over to where an endocrinologist says you have, you have diabetes, diabetes, you've probably been that way for seven years. Yeah. It's, it's, it's no. a very slow moving number. Well, and that's but, the best part about these is these will help you before you fall into that hole. Right. You know. Right. The example is my friend that I, and you know, and in fact, I saw him this morning, you know, a couple of years ago and, and he was overweight and, and he again, had no clue that he was diabetic, not a clue. He was just upset because he could not lose weight. Yeah. And he was doing, he thought, all the right things. And so he went uh, to his primary care, well, not an endocrinologist, but a primary care 
who did in fact go ahead and diagnose him with diabetes. I want to say it was in the eights, you know? And so eye opening to him and he wasn't even that upset about it. He was more happy that he found the root cause of what was going on, Mm -hmm. got on the Manjaro, which is the Mm Terzepatide and lost like 110 pounds. And, and, Mm -hmm. and and again, you know, it was for a short period of time. Insurance is going to cover that for a while, but he's talking to us now about getting back on it again, you know, because he's got a little bit more weight to lose and it did such a good job at addressing his diabetes. And of course, you know, they say the side effect is that he lost weight. (laughs) You know, that's the way the commercials say, oh, Uh some patients know a side effect of weight loss. You know, that's not really a side effect. That's a benefit. That's a benefit. (laughs) And it's a product of managing insulin resistance. Right. You know, and then I do get asked a lot of kind of off topic, but is this approved for use in children? Because, I mean, the the obesity epidemic is impacting yes. not just adults, but also oh, children. And it's, hey, you know, and I'm not going out saying, get your children, you know, test your children's A1C and get, no, I'm just saying this starts young. Sure it does. Starts very young. So if you're like, oh, I'm just in my 20s, you know, I, I don't know if I, go get your A1C tested. Yep. You know, talk to a licensed healthcare provider about your levels, whether it's thyroid, whether it's hormones, mm-hmm. you know, sex hormones, um, regardless of what it is, so that we can catch these things early. Right. And then you don't end up subsequently having to lose 110 pounds because we caught onto this as part of a whole metabolic and comprehensive mm-hmm. panel rather than playing catch up. Right. And, and you brought up a good point about about the, the children, too. I mean, the, the youth. I mean, mm-hmm. I remember when I was growing up, I mean, the idea of childhood diabetes was almost a completely Scared. foreign concept. Yeah. I mean, it's like, did, was that just made up? Kids don't have diabetes. Right? Mm-hmm. But it, it's more and more. I don't know the, the stats on it, but I mean, I'm telling you, you know, the the, the epidemic of childhood obesity and, and childhood diabetes now is, is far and away more than it ever was. And I'm not that old. This wasn't that yeah. long ago, right? <laughs> Uh-huh. So yeah, I think that's a great point, and and if necessary, this can address it in children as well. If, Absolutely, if it is FDA approved for use in children. It's significantly more effective in children. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, terzepatide and, and semaglutide is what's approved for use in children. Terzepatide, mm-hmm. I don't believe has has been through those trials. Is that because yet. it's new? Just 2021. So semaglutide came out in 2017. Okay. Um, Ozempic did, and then you know subsequently Wagovi, and then you have the oral versions like Rubelsis and Sixenda. Gotcha. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe you know. That's the best part about science and medicine, though, is that. We have access to these amazing drugs, yeah. um, and it's just so exciting to think about what's coming. You yeah. know, what's what's next? What, what's the next yeah, thing? I know. What's the yeah. next big thing that's coming that will oh, give yeah. us, you know, the opportunity to to give our patients, you know, amazing results and feedback. Right. But at the mm-hmm. end of the day, you know, we have to trust that the researchers and the the powers that be that govern, you know, medicine mm-hmm. is is really doing it truly for for the best interest of of the patient population. Well, and, and I think, um, yeah, I think we do a good job of it here. I mean, you know, I, I, oh, I, har- I harp on a lot of our agencies that do this, but I think, you know, compared to other countries, we do a pretty good job of it. You know, we we tend to be really kind of, we err more on the side of safety, mm-hmm. you know, than anything else. That's why we always say, don't take stuff out of your buddy's trunk. Yeah, you know, that please. Kind of thing. <laughs> um, but no, it's, and you know what, look, I mean, there, again, there is no miracle drug, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know that a miracle drug will ever be, and maybe there, maybe I'm speaking too soon. Maybe in Who 10 knows? years there will yeah. be, but for right now, you know, semaglutide and terzepatide tend to kind of be as close to a miracle drug as we can get when it comes to weight loss. It's, it's far and away one of our best sellers for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it probably 60 to 70% of the people that come to us, uh, you know, and to want to address their hormones, end up addressing some kind of a weight loss or insulin resistance issue too, whether on that, you know, um, and that's, that's the value of elite health online and our providers digging into that and realizing, Hey, you know, in conjunction with your HRT and wellness therapy, you know, some glutide and terzepatide may also be a good, a good adjunct to your program as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, anyway. in most cases it is, especially in people who, you know, even if they don't have a weight loss, even if weight loss wasn't their primary concern, like mm-hmm. you said, hey, you have an elevated A1C. Yep. And, you know, what's the, you know, like we were talking about before we started recording, um, I get asked a lot about, well, what's, you know, my patient doesn't want to do some of the or tears appetite for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. What are my other options? Right. Like, well, you know, there are great drugs out there like, you know, Phenermine or the, the thermogenic stack mm-hmm. that we use. Sure. Um, and naltrexone and some other, you know, vitamin-based protocols. But at the end of the day, the... The, the benefits that you receive from whether it's semaglutide or terzepatide um, are great. But going off the differences, right, semaglutide is usually a little bit more cost effective. Yeah. Um, terzepatide can be a little bit more expensive. But if it's a cost prohibitive thing, I would certainly encourage you to reach out to your provider. Um, those things can be, uh, you know, coordinated to to be more cost effective. Meanwhile, yeah. helping you prioritize your goals mm-hmm. and, and, you know, address what needs addressing first. Right. 
Right. So. And we don't ever want to make anything cost prohibitive to patients. We want to work with patients. We have several different options. Obviously, we can do, you know, pay up front in full. We can do payment programs, however the patient really wants to do this. I mean, we we don't want that to be the barrier if, if this is the therapy that the patients need to be on. And certainly if the provider thinks the patients need to be on this as well. Because sometimes we're not just talking about vanity, right? I mean, sometimes we're talking about your health and your oh, longevity. And, your and, and, and Yeah, exactly. And, and, and organ function. I mean, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate that. Always good to have you here. Um, and as always, folks, you can find uh, terzepatide, semaglutide, and everything else that we talk about at EliteHealthOnline.com. That's www.EliteHealthOnline.com. Uh, take a look, scroll through some of our products on there. Um, and at the very top, you'll see some buttons. Uh, you can click on Get Started. If you know you want to go ahead and become a patient, we'll get some labs ordered for you, get a link sent out to where you can pick your time with the with the licensed providers that we do have on staff with us you get a 20 minute consultation all that's free no charge for the consultation no charge for the labs so no reason not to do this if you still have questions click on got a question or book an appointment with a hormone optimization specialist who will call you at a time that you designate and answer any questions you may have so again www.elitehealthonline.com and we will see you there thank you <laughs>